All right, welcome back, guys. So here's my review for the Asgard. <laughs> Who comes up with these names? The Asgard Fly Controller. I'm such a kid. I'm going to keep it serious, I promise. <laughs> so I've spent the last couple hours uh, crunching numbers, tracing traces, figuring out everything that you need to know about this Fly Controller. And uh, also, I've been trying to predict all of your questions, so hopefully by the end of, the, of this video, all of your questions will be answered. As always, the order of this video will be uh, just the basic information that we can see on paper, all the stuff that I have found that's not on paper, and then I'll give you my uh, general thoughts, what I like and dislike about the flight controller. So this is a all-in-one flight controller, and in the last few weeks we took a look at the Betafly F3 flight controller, which has a built-in PDB on-screen display, current sensor, so on and so on. And after that we uh, messed around with the DYS F4 flight controller, which was almost exactly the same, it just had an F4 processor instead of the F3 processor. The Asgard <laughs> takes it a step further by adding in four ESCs. The flight controller can be powered with 2 to 4S, uh, the ESCs are rated at 24 amps each. They are BL Heli S ESCs. It does have the BB2 chipset, which are these smaller squares right here. I have already uh, done what's needed and traced the traces and all that good stuff to figure out uh, where the signal capacitors are because uh, some of you are, may be familiar with uh, if you want to run D shot protocol for your quote unquote D shot ESCs, uh, you need to remove that signal capacitor. This flight controller actually does not have. The signal capacitors so there is nothing you have to remove. Now if you do try to locate the signal capacitors by looking at the data sheet for these BB2 chips uh, you will run into a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor for all four of these. Do not remove that you do need that resistor. It has the F4 processor SPI instead of I squared C for the faster communication virtual COM port instead of the CP2102 chipset and driver, meaning that none of the UARTs are shared with the USB. It does have three UARTs. We've got UART number six located here, UART number one here. So where is UART number three? Whenever you purchase this, it does come with a wiring diagram, but UART number three is not located on the wiring diagram. I've already gone ahead and traced the pins from the processor. So just a little FYI. Uh, UART number 3 receive is here. This l small little pad on the left and the pad on the right is UART 3 transmit. As I said before, it does have the built-in on-screen display, which can be used with Betaflight's OSD feature. It's a, an amazing feature. You can uh, change your PIDs, rates, expos, super rates, and much more. If you have a video transmitter with smart audio, you can change your bands and frequencies. The built-in current sensor it also has a built-in 5 volt voltage regulator, uh, but one thing about that, uh, the two websites that I found that sell these are going to be readytoflyquads.com and myairbot.com. There's probably more, I just haven't really looked, uh, but if you go to readytoflyquads.com, they have a lot of wrong information. Just for example, they say that this comes with a barometer, but there is no barometer located on this board whatsoever. I even went into Betaflight just to double check, and uh, I can confirm there's no barometer. They also state that, uh, they say one time that it's the 5 volt regulator is rated at 3 amps of output, but then twice in the same paragraph they say that it's rated at 1.5 amps. So I thought, well, which one is it? Then I went to myairbot.com and they say that it's rated at 1 amp. There is an inductor located on the board right here. Now, uh, I mean, I've already spent two hours tracing out everything else, so I'm not about to do the math needed to figure out what this is actually rated for, uh, but it is a 4.7 micro Henry uh, inductor. I do apologize, it, it is ex exams week this week. I've already done enough electrical engineering math for the week. My brain is fried. Um, so let's just all assume that's rated at one amp. It also has the uh, SD card reader for you guys that want to do black box logging. You get a buzzer and LED pins or ports, or you want to call it, on this JST connector here. And this connector is for your video in and out for the built-in on-screen display. Okay, now moving on to uh, some other things that I have found out about this board. It has 24 capacitors on it, and uh, they're not that large, and 24 of these smaller ones doesn't seem like a lot. 
total capacitance is going to be I would say between 430 and 440 microfarads which isn't too bad but uh, the thing is and the major drawback about this board if one of the ESCs go bad then the entire flight controller is now trash that is unless you know how to repair your own PCBs I mean I'm, I'm not really concerned with it I could repair this no problem but uh, if you can't then that is a lot of money to go to waste if one of the ESCs go bad 430 microfarads uh, if these were four individual ESCs, I would say that's actually not good at all. But because this is, they're all located on one board and the capacitors are in parallel, it's not that bad. But I do still recommend using a uh, electrolytic capacitor like this. Uh, this is a 470 microfarad, rated at 35 volts, low ESR. If we tie this bad boy in and then recheck it about 875 microfarads and I would be I'd call that the safe zone so definitely pick up one of those capacitors if you don't have one I mean it's up to you that's just my opinion nothing more nothing less next up uh, whenever you plug in the USB cable it will power all of the 5 volt pins on the flight controller um, not only that but you can actually go into the BL Heli suite and make all of your setting changes to the ESCs without having to plug in a LiPo battery that's the first time I've ever seen that but speaking of if we look at this wiring diagram it says right here that on this connector it will produce 5 volts or 3 volts which is technically 3.3 volts uh, because you know there's there's no 3 volt regulator it's 3.3 and this would be great for you guys using the spectrum satellite receivers uh, then you would have ground power and receive to connect your receiver into this JST connector the problem though is I have not found a way to make this put out 3.3 volts because when you plug in a, a USB cable and as not only that but if you plug in a battery this produces 5 volts either way and I cannot find out how to switch it but regardless even if you can't figure out how to switch it either there is a 3.3 volt pad located right here you could just run your power wire to this for you Turnigy guys uh, using iBus iBus does work on all three of the UARTs if you are using SBUS uh, especially if you are using like a free sky receiver or something like that where the receiver uh, the signal is inverted um, like I explained before, the F3 flight controllers, they have inverters on all three of the UARTs. On the F4 boards, they only come with one hardware inverter, which is located right here. On most F4 boards, that one hardware inverter is tied into UART number one, which is this connector. But on this board, it's actually tied into UART number six. So you Free Sky guys, and I don't know about you Spectrum guys, I don't, I don't know if the signal is inverted or not, but... Uh, Either way, you want to use this connector for your receiver. Uh, then if you want to use telemetry, you do have to do that hardware modification to uninvert the telemetry signal, or basically invert it twice, which will un uninvert it. Uh, I already did a video on that. I'll leave that video in the description below so you can check it out, and then you can get your telemetry off of this connector. For you guys wanting to use PPM, I know with the DYS F4 flag and chore, I uh, traced the uh, pins and traces from the processor and found a workaround for you guys uh, because there was one very tiny pad on that board where you could use PPM. On this board, uh, there is no pad, no pin, no nothing for PPM. This is the top of the processor uh, when you place this dot in the top left. If you count four pins to the left, the fourth pin that is the PPM pin but you'll notice that all of the pins on the top of the processor uh, they're not going anywhere because they ran out of room on this board so these pins are I mean they're not going to anything it's just a dead end so if you do want PPM and if you are really really good at soldering you can solder a wire to that fourth leg and get PPM to work though I would just recommend buying a S bus or I bus receiver it does have the boot pins for the bootloader located right here, these through holes, though you should not need it because this comes with Betaflight firmware and uh, between that and the virtual COM port, all you have to do is just choose the uh, Omnibus F4 target or firmware and then click flash firmware. It will automatically go into the bootloader and flash the firmware, uh, which by the way, yeah, this uh, the firmware is 
the Omnibus F4. Just like with the DYS F4 flag controller, uh, they're all borrowing firmware from the Omnibus. And the last piece of information, uh, ReadyToFlyQuads.com state that uh, if one of the ESCs do go bad, they will do a free repair for it. Or the other option is a no questions asked, $45, uh, you just give them that and they will send you another flight controller for 45 bucks. Though um, m many of you have told me in the past, whenever I was going through the beta flight, or not the beta flight, the Omnibus video series, that uh, you you couldn't find a way to contact RageToFlyQuads.com uh, because you said that they don't have a phone number, no email, no nothing. Um, I ne I've never tried to contact them because I've never had a bad part from them uh, or anything go bad. And even if di something did go bad, I would just repair it myself. But uh, so I can't confirm that. I'm just saying. Point of my story is. If you can't contact them, then what is the point of them saying that they will repair this for free? It seems like one bad joke. But things could have changed since then, I don't know. I've never tried to contact them. But like I said, uh, your other option is myairbots.com and they seem to be uh, pretty good at uh, actually you know, talking to you guys. And just to wrap things up, what do I think? Uh, the good parts? I think it's a pretty good idea. Uh, I mean the the, the logic and theory and reasoning is there. Put everything in one board. Why not? Uh, I think it's a pretty smart idea. It has everything that you need. The on-screen display, which like I said before, is my most favorite on-screen display on the market right now. The current sensor, the ESCs, uh, I mean, it, it, it's got everything. And there are no pins. It, you just use these four connectors here. Normally, I hate these JST connectors, but uh, I mean, because everything is already built in, there's really not going to be that much wiring. You wire in your motors and your receiver, and you're done, unless you want to add in a buzzer and LEDs. For the bad parts, uh, like I said before, if one ESC goes bad, then uh, you either have to throw this away, repair it yourself, or somehow get in contact with you know, one of the websites and see if they'll repair it for you. And this is a lot of money that will go to waste if uh, that does happen and one of the ECs go bad. The USB connector is on the front of the flight controller. So once you actually have this mounted in your frame, I could see that being a huge headache. The 5 volt regulator rated at 1 amp. Um, if you are using something like a TBS video transmitter that can only be powered off of 5 volts, I know not all of them do, I'm just saying some of them do. Trying to power that video transmitter, your camera, a receiver, and maybe even LEDs and a buzzer, that is going to be way over one amp, and you are more than likely going to fry something. So in that case, I would recommend using a video transmitter that can be powered with the full voltage of the battery. And uh, what would be even better than that, which uh, it's not necessary, but I use the Cricut video transmitters. They can be powered with the full voltage of the battery. They have their own 5 volt regulator built in, and then I can power my camera off of the video transmitter. So then I would not be stressing the regulator on the board. But if you do power your VTX off of the, the battery, you, you can power a camera off of this. I don't think that would draw too much current. You should be fine. And last but not least, you have to consider how you're going to mount this onto your frame. If you're using a frame that uses a bottom mounted battery with uh, straps run through it like this, this is probably going to cover your straps and it's probably not going to work. Now uh, in this case I'm pretty lucky because with the AUG 210 the flight controller mounts more towards the rear and with the flight controller mounted right here I still have room for my straps so it's no big deal. So that's just something to be aware of. And that's going to wrap it up, guys. So there's my review for the Asgard. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.